lost, driving in a strange town with an address but no map. Sooner or later, it's a pedestrian who helps out. Straight round the corner and up the road on the other side of this one. But pedestrians naturally think in terms of walking. All too often, the driver meets a wall of signs forcing him to go in quite the wrong direction. So, ask again. I've heard of it, but uh, I couldn't tell you how to get there. Fifty yards, turn right at T-junction. 175 yards, turn left at crossroads. 200 yards, straight on at traffic lights. Now that's what I call a really good navigator. A clear, precise instruction, given in plenty of time for me to position myself in the road so that I can negotiate the hazard or the change of direction with the utmost convenience. Yet here I am, completely alone in the car, and at the same time in the very best of hands. My navigator is this pre-recorded cassette of tape. On it are all the instructions I need to find my way around this route, and if I ever use a different route, I simply use a different cassette. Most of the time, the playing unit is switched off. It's only switched on to relay the instructions to me. And those times are dictated by this control unit, which is mounted underneath the dashboard. On the end of each instruction is recorded a bleep, and it's the precise length of this bleep which tells the control unit how far the car has to travel before the next instructions are due. The cassette player is connected to the control unit here, here, the control unit is connected to the car myelometer. And as my road wheels rotate, taking me forward, this wheel on the control unit rotates. Now its revs are counted, and when that count corresponds with the information stored here from the bleep at the end of the last instruction, the next instruction is given. Now this unit will work with any make of car. All it needs to know to make sure it keeps me on the right road is the size of tire that I'm using. And I can give it that information by clipping in the appropriate circuit board. Right, let's uh, put the unit back together and uh, give it another spin. 200 yards, keep left at fork. The system effectively is a route map. It takes the driver from point A to point B. This prototype program has been set up over 20 miles in the Chatham area of Kent, covering roads through town and country. And the designers have tried it out using a number of different drivers, and they've discovered that despite differences in techniques, speed, tire pressures and the like, their program over that 20 miles is accurate to within 30 yards. 250 yards, turn left at crossroads. Applications for a system like this that spring to mind self-drive hire cars from London Airport to the big hotels in the city centre. Routes could be programmed for these in all the languages of the world. Bus drivers could be trained on new routes with the utmost convenience. The designers have even had some inquiries from a firm that specialises in chauffeur-driven hire cars taking American tourists around the stately home circuit. It seems that the demand for chauffeurs far outstrips the supply. And the last thing a wealthy American wants when he's spending hundreds of dollars on his car is for the driver to get lost. Turn right immediately before Zebra Crossing into Maidstone Road. There is one drawback in all this, though. If for some reason or another the road system has been altered, there are roadworks or some diversion in force which isn't programmed on the tape, well, then this whole business just becomes one glorious guided mystery tour. 350 yards, turn right at T-junction. Turn left at crossroads. Turn right immediately before Zebra Crossing. <laughs>